I'm here with a very special or important box opening. Uh, we've got a package here from Adrian Watson all the way from Australia. Uh, we've been eagerly waiting. Uh, a lot of people might have seen the famous forging video that I've posted everywhere since I knew that he was making a replica for me. Uh, we have an artifact here that was sent to us by Ulfar Rolfinson. Uh, he's an avid viewer and he's very much into the Varingian Guard and the Kevian Rus. Uh, this axe here, or ux, as he calls it, the Gamal ux, uh, is from Novgorod, a settlement near Kiev, back in the day, back when uh, it was uh, Rorik's dynasty. And that's when you had the Varangian Guard appear. You've got uh, all the Scandinavian warriors. Uh, most of them were from Scandinavia, almost 90% of them or more. And uh, they fought with axes, of course, and this axe was found in a bog near Novgorod. So... The whole thing is, the immediate assumption is this axe uh, is from the Viking Age, and uh, it was used in combat. A lot of people have argued that maybe not, because they're looking at the design and saying that it doesn't look like a uh, war-type axe. But if you look at the Slavic design axes from earlier period, during the migrational period, uh, they favored axes with smaller heads. Matter of fact, Slavs love axes. They even have uh, per Peru, if I pronounce it properly, uh, one of their gods where they wear axe amulets. We even find those in Scandinavia. But we have the axe here. It's an artifact. I've actually tested it on an analog ballistics gel head because that's what the owner wanted me to do. Wolfar wanted me to test this thing out, and we did. I didn't think it would damage it upon examining the iron axe with the hard iron edge. Uh, it's still got an extremely hard edge. All it did is remove a little of the patina from the very edge when it went through the uh, analogs. You might want to check that video out. It was very good a video. It was very exciting. Uh, but I figured the reason an axe would be small like this is if you look at the old Roman examples, uh, that they have uh, what some people consider utility axes, but a lot of historians consider the ones with the very small uh, edges that are almost useless for any type of utility were used for armor piercing. They were backup armor piercing weapons. You had a hammer on one side, then you had a very small edge on the other. This edge is extremely small. It doesn't have a big beard. Uh, but even in the Viking Age, we see one from Stockholm, Sweden, uh, that has a little bit of a beard, but it's almost the same profile. It's so close, it's ridiculous. But the other uh, note on this axe is it could be an early Slavic axe that was thrown in the bog. It's not impossible from the Iron Age. Uh, but in that case, we find axes uh, from Needham uh, Mose, or uh, Bog, which were in Denmark. They look almost identical to this axe. No, it was actually, they said Viking axes, but these were from anywhere from the 3rd century uh, up to the 5th century. So that's from the year 200 to the year 4-something. So, I mean, it could predate the migrational age, in theory, if it was in the year 200. So, I doubt that it would go back that far. But this shape and design, I kind of believe he's correct. I've nicknamed it the Tor Torslav or Torslav uh, Fuchs and tested it. And I believe he's correct that this was probably used by the Varangian Guard. We know the Varangian Guard used large amounts of armor. And a smaller axe head like this with a very broad iron uh, body to make up for the weight of not it being a broadened axe, like actually shaped out into a big old broad edge, would actually possibly penetrate male armor easily and damage plate and transfer energy much better and not get stuck not being a point or something like that and survive much better. So uh, they did use large bearded axes during the Viking Age and they probably could use those when they showed up in the country before they gained more and more armor. And also in that climate and region, it's a lot colder, so people wore a lot more hides and heavy clothing. So something like this I think would be very, very effective. Although the broad edges can be sharpened down, and they work really good on, on cloth armor and leather armor. Uh, and that's probably why you see a lot more of them in the other regions that the Scandinavians used, is because it was easier to hit with. A big broad edge, it's still better than a sword in focusing energy and power uh, in behind the cut, but it's also easier not to miss. Something like this is a lot harder, as I felt in the vi uh, video when I tested it, to hit straight on and get the point in, so to speak, because on a long handle like this, it feels good on the uh, haft or shaft that he's mounted it on. I didn't do that, uh, Wolfar did, but uh, it's a lot harder to get it just right on because it's like hitting with a small hammer or so on. But anyway, we want to test this against armor, and that brings me back to our package here. Uh, Adrian Watson was kind enough to make a replica of this out of iron, 
wrought iron and put in a hardened uh, edge. He put a steel edge in and hardened it. Uh, so that's the best we can do on the hard iron for the edge. So let's go ahead and see what we have here in the box. He sent other goodies as well. I've got plate. It looks like two millimeters. He promised to send me. Uh, this would be great for hammering out like an info uh, for a center boss. It would hold up really, really well. This is mild steel plate. Uh, it's got a finish on it to keep it from rusting, I'm sure. But it would also be good to shake out into armor pieces and test, because mild steel is very close to iron. But he also promised something else, so let's see if that's in here. Ah, wrought iron. He had trouble getting a hold of it. This is an actual piece of wrought iron that he hammered out, like they would have done early period, like during the Viking Age. He hammered the wrought iron out. He left the schlag on one side, and it unfinished and only polished it on the other side. So this should be equivalent to what they would have used for like, let's say a Hjalmar back in the uh, Viking age. And that's what I want to do is kind of like maybe shape it out a little bit and put it up like it's on a helmet. I can figure out a way to mount it, test this out. That would be awesome. See what else we have in here. I kind of had taken the packing material out because I had to so we could get through this quickly because he had it packed very well. Uh, oh. This is a Viking fire steel. He included us. Thank you so much, Adrian Watson. Uh, he did a video uh, where we did a collaboration where he gave me the video and I voiced the video and put it on the channel. And it was how to make a Viking fire steel by, uh, by No BS Survival Blacksmithing. So go by there and say hey to him and give him some love. Uh, but you can also watch that video on our channel. And he's got a Viking fire steel right here so I can sit there and maybe do a video on Viking fire steels and see if we can start a fire with it and if I actually use it properly. Let's see how it works. Very nice. Thank you again, Adrian Watson, for that. Did not expect that. And here, what we've all been waiting for, we're already taking some of the tape off of it. It's got a nice little cover here because it's got a razor sharp edge. The replica of our Torslev or Torslav axe. It is beautiful. And like I said, the uh, these uh, Slavic people actually favored axes with a hammer on one side and a very small axe head on the other side. Even later century you see these when they were fighting with armor. So I can't see why. And the Franks also used axes very much like this. And we find some axes that look like Frankish style axes, the Francesca, in Scandinavia. They're not exact, but they're very similar. So uh, I would say yes, more than likely this probably belonged to a Varangian guard member in my mind. But I mean, it's up to skepticism. We could go all the way back to the years 200, so beautiful. But I'm also going by how hard this uh, hard iron is, or steel edge, uh, that's on this iron ax that's been forge welded into it. And he did the exact same thing here. It's so hard and held up so well, I cannot picture it going back to the year 200. I'm sorry, even in a bog find. I'm thinking it was probably something around the Viking era, around the 9th century or so or later. And I do see that as an evolution on the axe, if they were fighting an axe and shield one-handed to want something that would penetrate armor better, if more and more armor was being worn. They had splinted arms, splinted legs, uh, lamellar. It looks almost identical, but I, I grant you this, he didn't get to see it in person. He only had my photographs and measurements, but I think he's done an excellent job. And I like the way he left the forge well at the bottom where you can actually see that the piece was welded into it. You could almost identify it perfectly in here if you look closely in the artifact. Thank you so much. We're definitely going to have fun testing this on armor. This gives me that ability without ruining the actual true artifact so I can return it to Ulfar. This is going to, to be the greatest test ever I, I, against mail as well. We will be using period mail with this. I think that is the most prominent thing it would go against. And let me see what else we've got. We've got an extra bonus here for you. We've got a package from Medieval Shop. And uh, it was some jewelry that wasn't included in the original package when he sent the little Mjolnir pendant that I'm wearing here. Said I would wear after I took it out after the storm. Uh, he sent another pendant, a little hammer pendant. I think it's supposed to be more dramatic in design or something is what he said. But uh, it's a beautiful little uh, hammer. And we're going to be doing a special on this. I have a... Uh, a friend of mine who's an uh, I should say expert, but he's someone who's studied in the museums. He's over there in Scandinavia, and he's gone all through their museums and stuff and searched, uh, researched all information he can on these type of 
uh, amulets, because there's a lot of stuff we know about these during the Viking Age, and they show up mostly during the Viking Age. You see the nail their pendants or the hammer pendants, but there's a lot of stuff we don't know about them. So we're going to cover an episode on that. It'll be just on the hammers themselves and what we do and what we don't know. It's a beautiful, beautiful pendant, and I have a Viking Age knot work with animals. That's very common. It's a beautiful medallion. I love how they've got a separate piece of knot work that actually holds it to the uh, cording and the little clasp on the back. I think it's very elegantly done. And we have dragons or ormen. Uh, very common, like you'd see on the bow of a ship. To put that out for everybody. Well, anyway, I hope you all enjoyed our episode uh, of opening the box. This, this, we've been waiting anxiously, me and Wolfar. We've been sitting there just waiting and waiting for this thing to show up. And Adrian Watson's been having trouble getting it to us. So thank you so much once again for sending it. We, we it's one of my most proud uh, things that I can say is that someone actually went to the trouble to replicate an artifact that I have on hand to be testing, so we don't damage it. And so we have something to find out what it would have done and how effective it would have been against farmer. So thank you once again, Adrian Watson, and everybody out there for viewing the episode. And as always, Farbell.